أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين. We were discussing the problem of evil and how we are able to uh, combine between believing in Almighty God being the omnipotent, the all-powerful, the omniscient, the all-knowing, and the surfacing of the phenomena of evil around us. If someone believes in God and knows that God is all-powerful and all-merciful and all-compassionate and all-loving, why is it that they uh, are able to comprehend along with that the reality that God allows suffering to happen? If He was powerful and compassionate and all-loving, then He would uh, stop a person undergoing extreme levels of pain and suffering. Um, he would stop the occurring of uh, natural disasters that would probably eradicate a whole village. And this could be the main element, the main factor as to why some people have abandoned religion or are skeptical about God and religion, or became atheists. And that's why it's a very important uh, topic for us to deal with. Of course, we understand that there's this new modern kind of atheism, uh, the, or the scientific atheism, or the, the Dawkins atheism, and uh, God being a delusion, and illusion, and uh, the, these discussions discussions that have um, come up. Of course, uh, I have made it very clear that in this course I'm going to stay away from presenting just theories, but more uh, involving ourselves in understanding the uh, entry-level discussions to each of these contemporary topics in uh, Islamic theology that are applicable to us as practicing Muslims. And therefore, should one wish to further research and read and study and everything, there are many uh, good material that you are able to have access to. Unfortunately, I'd like to say that right here, unfortunately, one of the problems that we do have as Shia Muslims is the lack of English sources in the Shia Muslim world in regards to contemporary Islamic theology and tackling it from a Shi'i perspective. And um, you can see that there are many pieces of information and good, solid, strong articles and books in Persian, in Arabic, but it's very scarce to find things like this in the English language. Nonetheless, I will be sharing uh, a material for you, the participant, to be able to read in your further research and investigation into these topics. Important thing here is that we're not going to uh, look at this aspect of the problem of, of evil from an emotional side, because there are certain individuals who might have rebelled or uh, argued or gone against religion or God based on their emotional reaction to some kind of event that happened in their life. Example, they lost a loved one and they are not able to uh, comprehend the reality of why it is that God you know, deprived them of the uh, life of a family member, especially if this family member was young, someone that they were very much attached to, and things like that. And so, you know, their only way of soothing this um, uh, hurtful place in their heart was to just blame it on God and say, well, God, why did you do this to me? I no longer believe in you. And that also falls under this same category of the issue of evil and um, and that's why we did mention that you know we have this uh, providence and the problem of evil now 
when we deal with these kind of issues of emotional reactions to certain incidences that might come across a person's life, obviously the main issue here is that lack of strength in faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that lack of understanding as to why is it that there are people who are given lives and people who are taken, uh, lives are taken away from them. Why are we able to uh, make a quick judgment uh, in regards to life and death, but not realize that there is a greater picture for us to look into? And of course, nobody objects to the giving of life, but some might object to the taking away of life. Of course, it's hurtful, you know. Uh, again, if we were to say that, you know, the philosophy of how God is in his all uh, merciful uh, status is that he never allows any level of infliction of harm or pain or suffering onto any human being, then clearly the first of these people who he would not allow any kind of harm or infliction of any suffering would be the infallibles, would be the prophets, would be the imams. Whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he has said, مَا أُوذِيَ نَبِيٌّ بِمِثْلِ مَا أُوذِيَتْ There has been no prophet who has endured the level of suffering as to the amount that I have. Now, looking at it in this particular way and seeing that there is a system, this system is an equal system that uh, collaborates between the good and the bad that that brings together between um, the positive and the negative and when it comes to the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they need to be taken equally as well that is the system of takafu where there is a balance even though we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Rahmaniyyah and Rahimiyyah, we also look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in things having a cause and effect uh, reason. That, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ That corruption has appeared, has surfaced in uh, the land and in the sea. Then he says, فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ And this is all as a result of your own actions. When God says that كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every person is going to experience death. Now when this is going to happen, of course, every human being, as the Qur'an says, would love to live for over a thousand years. We don't want to die but we are going to have to go through death, whether it be now, whether it be uh, in the near future, whether it be by drowning, whether it be uh, while we are sleeping in comfortably in our beds. Each one has its own purpose and for each its own reason. And there are many ways of interpreting these things as well. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does all of this for a reason. I just mentioned the word drowning. You know we have the hadith that says, مَنْ مَاتَ غَرِيقًا مَاتَ shahida." Someone who dies drown drowning dies as a martyr, the re re receiving the reward of a martyr. So again, looking at that in the positive way that mashallah, look at this person dying in this kind of death. And therefore, even though we are going to all end up in the grave, but the quality of the death is going to change. And that's one way of Almighty God purifying us as well, purifying us from our sins in this dunya before we enter into the uh, life hereafter. Now, when we see these things that could be the ultimate cause, it could be the complete cause, it could be the, the deficient cause, whatever it may be, you know, there is a paradox that might seem to be an issue as far as our understanding of God's 
uh, attributes and his description in who, who he is. But Islam is very effective in the way that it deals with this paradox, which in reality is not a paradox. It's the way we look at it. Even though the traditional, customary kind of definition of shar evil is adam al khair or the lack or the absence of khair, at the same time we can see that evil does exist here around us and we are able to also interpret things in such a way where uh, they fall into the very fact of how we are able to uh, see Almighty God and believe in believing in Him as well. Khair, what does khair mean? Shar is the absence of khair. Khair means good. Khair also means abundance. You know, and so when we are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is omniscient or He is omnipotent and all of these other things, we can see that in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is always going to be khair and good. As for shar, it is that a lack of that presence of divinity. Even though we believe that it is there, you know, we can see evil, we can experience some kind of badness that is occurring around us, but you know, at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always going to recompensate. You know, even though we are held accountable for what we do, He also recompensates what, he does, what, what happens. He takes life, He gives life. He takes a job away from you, He gives you many other opportunities and talents as well. And that's exactly why um, when it does come to the understanding of evil, you know, we can see that God, um, if He was to uh, permit evil occurring in this world, there must be a reason for it. What is this reason and why? Inshallah, we're going to be speaking about that in our third uh, episode on the topic of evil here in our um, subject of contemporary Islamic theology. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin.